the members of the Science and Security Board find the world to be no safer than it was last year at this time, and therefore have decided to set the doomsday clock at 100 seconds to midnight. And there have been several alarming new reports that the climate crisis is getting worse. You may be done with COVID, but COVID is not done with the United States, nor is COVID done with the world. This bad situation only factor is USA. More than five months after the chaotic and deadly U.S. withdrawal, but on the streets, people are hungry. Some selling their kidneys, even their children for cash. The United Nations held an emergency security council meeting to try to deter Russia from invading. I didn't want to narrate this film initially. I thought that I could treat this project clinically the way I treat every other school project. If I stay at arm's length, it won't feel so real. It won't cause my heart to feel like it's beating out of my chest or like someone's holding a gun to my head, daring me to ask why we're so fucked lest they pull the trigger. But it is 100 seconds to midnight and I cannot separate myself from a world that I am a part of, a world that is facing impending doom. I remember days where I would sing and dance for fun, days where I would devour thick books like candy, days where every day was exciting. I remember looking at my parents like they were gods, flawless, immortal protectors. I can't remember when those euphoric feelings faded. I can't remember when I stopped feeling protected and started feeling like I was alone to fend for myself, or when I stopped feeling endless joy and started feeling endless fear. Was it around here? 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 Or maybe here? All I hear in my head is a ticking clock. Counting down, down, down. It's been a, a week, I think, since the uh, Roe v. Wade speculations. Um, that's just um, excellent, an excellent piece of news to get during finals week and I don't know it feels dystopian it feels unreal it feels like I don't know I I I don't even have time to be mad about it because I'm so worried about passing the semester so I just um I I can't begin to fathom what's about to come, what's about to happen and it is driving me insane. Yep. I am going insane. I need to make a name for myself before the world ends, before nuclear war, before civil war, before the race war, before the world overheats and we all blow up. Who will even remember me if we all die? Who cares? I ask myself every day if I should give up this corporate cycle, if I should start living for joy again like how I did when I was young. I am so incredibly tired all the time and it often feels like I'm working for nothing. Adults say our generation is strong, that we are creative and resilient and amazing, 
I agree with them, but sometimes I want to yell at them. I'm not interested in being strong or resilient or creative or extraordinary. I'm interested in existing. What I think that all of this experience does is really make your generation really strong. And I like your generation, I like Gen Z, because the question of why is always being asked. Why is it this way? Why have I adopted such a chaotic mess of a world? And so I think it creates curiosity. I think it creates cu uh, creativity while also creating a level of nuance that is wrapped in disconnect. Because to deal with it, you have to kind of disconnect. I am emotionally exhausted. <laughs> yeah. So still, like, go lot... on about emotional exhaustion. Yeah, it's I... excellent material for my document. Yeah. <laughs> but I also want to listen. Yeah, totally fine. Um, but yeah, literally, I've just gotten very good at like, making myself so busy I don't have time to worry about stuff. And that's been my coping mechanism for a long time. It was, it's good for the short term. It's, this shit is not sustainable at all. So. Right. Every day should not feel like a fight. And every world event should not feel like another heavy burden our generation has to carry. Do I care about maintaining my scholarship, or do I stay updated on whether or not Putin has launched a nuclear bomb? I want to not care so much, but it is a privilege to not care. It is a privilege to ignore the world. I am so fortunate to turn my phone off, ignore everyone, and disappear into fictional worlds in my head. Not everyone can do that. Not everyone is allowed to. Like, I never went through an after-shooter drill growing up in school, so I have no clue. But the idea that you're huddled in a corner and doing these things in preparation that someone might be coming to try and kill you is a frightening idea as an adult, let alone as a child. Um, so those types of experiences and seeing these types of things go forward and then being in a space where you're cognitively able to understand that legislation and policy and procedure politics are in some ways still they're sitting complicit in this trauma becomes very frustrating and upsetting because like do you not care and the fact that we do believe in a hereafter as well so like heaven and hell so we do believe in like doing the right thing and like um that like hopefully inshallah will like lead us to like enter heaven and so even though there's like a lot going wrong in the world the thing is a lot of the stuff that's been happening we have like signs of like the end of the world that like have also been set so a lot of it kind of lines up so it's not like unexpected per se because you know we were told from like before that like these were signs that were going to come things like you know um like corrupt, uh, Some people, people like, find solace that. in so religion, that's like a way in that's faith. Because, like, you know, they say everything like, happens like, for a reason, like that, that we are all working to be good now so that we can reach heaven when we die. I'm glad these people found hope in their faith, found a reason to live their lives with goodness in their hearts. But sometimes I feel that there are things too horrible in this world to happen for a reason. Is genocide, natural disasters, bigotry, exploitation, etc. all just a part of God's plan? Is there a reason why some people die over others? Is there a reason for one's pain and suffering and someone else's joy? I think the only thing I know for sure is that we're all trying to find our slice of happiness in the hundred seconds we have left until midnight. We sing, we play our instruments as loud as we can, we dance, we cry, we laugh, but we also fight. Relentlessly, ferociously, unapologetically. And even though our parents and protectors seem so much more mortal than they once did, 
I have accepted their humanness. Maybe I am even on my way to forgiving them. And as shitty as everything seems all the time, I'm okay with that. I'm proud of it. And so I feel like Gen Z has been put into a very hard position, yet I also think Gen Z is in a very powerful position because of how you, of the curiosity that has been grown out of these experiences that now lend to the creativity and the ability to push change and demand things differently. And I think it's our job to do the work today that is not so much going to achieve the final goals that we might be imagining, uh, uh, but that will keep those goals alive and, and that uh, we'll, we'll be able to pass them down from one generation uh, to the next. This is beauty standards. <laughs> this is this is what beauty looks like. <laughs> There's no armhole. There's no armhole. Six dollars and no armhole. Look at that. Look at the crotch. <laughs> She's wearing crocs too. <laughs> yeah, beauty standards. This is the. This is what fashion looks like. <laughs> yeah, alright, I guess let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I want to see what I look like. I'm, I'm recording this whole journey. Oh my god, you. are gonna go back to college, I'm looking like a guy. <laughs> I'm excited. Looking like oh, that. Wow.